Let me read to you a passage from the ninth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 14 to 17. It's the Gospel for Saturday of the 13th week of ordinary time. St. Matthew writes, Then John's disciples came and asked Jesus, How is it that we and the disciples fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is still with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. Then they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunken cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do men pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. That's from Matthew chapter 9, verse 14 to 17. What is distinctive about Christianity? This is an important question because the answer to it reveals to the Christian where his principal focus and emphasis ought lie. For instance, is it that we should love God with all our mind, heart, will and strength and our neighbour as ourselves? This requirement is essential, of course, and when this is being done, sanctity is present. This is precisely what our Lord himself did, but it cannot be said to be the distinguishing feature of Christian teaching, for it was taught by Moses too. Our Lord quotes from the book of Deuteronomy in giving this answer to the question about the most important commandment of the law. The God of historical revelation requires of his people a total love for him. And Jesus Christ reiterates this. Is it then love for neighbour? Well, the Old Testament insistently demanded this, and the prophets condemned a religion of sacrifices and holocausts, which turned a blind eye to injustices and lack of compassion for the suffering. Our Lord was not teaching a new precept when he told the parable of the rich man and the poor man Lazarus, who, when he died, was taken by the angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man was buried in hell because he totally neglected to assist Lazarus, who continually lay at his gate. A great deal of the moral teaching of Jesus Christ was already contained in the law and the prophets. Some of it was present, and is present, in the natural moral law, accessible to the conscience of man and reflected in civil laws and non-Christian religions. Christ's teaching on the being and personhood of God assumes and often repeats what was already revealed, God's oneness, his holiness, power, wisdom, goodness, love, and his limitless richness. Of course, it is not a mere repetition of prior revelation. Very importantly, it involves a great fulfillment of what was already revealed. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. It looks as if our Lord was appearing to some as coming with something that replaced and abolished the law and the prophets. But no, not the least of the revealed commandments was to be relaxed. Rather, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. The most distinctive thing about the Christian religion is the very person of Jesus Christ. He is the most distinctive feature of all religion, that is, of all the religions and philosophies of the world. Not only is this apparent to the Christian insider, as we might call him, but also to many outside the Christian pale. Pope Benedict XVI, in the first volume of his work entitled Jesus of Nazareth, refers to the significance of the observations on Jesus Christ made by the Jewish scholar Rabbi Jacob Neusner in his book, A Rabbi Talks with Jesus. Indeed, the Pope writes that, I have been greatly helped by the book, page 103. Presumably he means that what Neusner writes greatly confirms what Benedict knew and now repeats. Neusner, 
posing a dialogue with Jesus, compares the words of Jesus with those of the Old Testament and with the rabbinic traditions, and asks what Jesus added. He added himself, page 105. Jesus' own self is central to his message, and this gives everything a new direction. Perfection, the state of being holy as God is holy, as demanded by the Torah, now consists in following Jesus. This is the essentially new element in which the message of Jesus diverges from the faith of traditional Israel. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. He is the Torah, the word of God in person. His disciples in him are the new Israel. Neusner the Jew sees very clearly that the most distinctive thing about the teaching and religion of Jesus Christ is the very person of Jesus himself. All of this brings us to our gospel passage today from Matthew chapter 9, verse 14 to 17, in which we read that John's disciples came and asked Jesus, how is it that we and the, and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not? Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, then they will fast. It is to be noted that according to John's disciples, there was nothing very distinctive about the life of piety instilled by John. It was similar to that of the best Pharisees, except perhaps we may add for its greater purity. For instance, both they and the disciples of the Pharisees fasted, but those of Jesus do not fast. That was an obvious difference, and we would have and would have led many to think that something new in religion was afoot. What was new then? The new thing was Jesus himself, his very own person. Jesus was the bridegroom who was now with them. How can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is still with them? No prophet had referred to himself as the bridegroom. This was a hallowed term, and in the prophets it had been used by God to describe himself in relation to his chosen people. They were his spouse, he their husband. The history of the chosen people had been described by the prophets speaking in the name of the Lord in terms of spousal fidelity. So then, the bridegroom was now present and among his disciples, and in Jesus and his disciples there was present the new Israel that possessed and offered the kingdom. That kingdom was God's lordship as present in Jesus, except accessible to all those in union with him by faith and baptism. Let us draw near to the bridegroom then, and never leave his side.